Hey Ashley, now that you've said yes and we're getting married, I have something to tell you. You know all those nights where I said I was at the hackerspace working on projects? Well, I was working on a very special project for these last few months. We've been together for six years, and it was about time that I popped the question. But, being the maker I am, I had to make the ring myself. Let me show you the process of how I designed and made your engagement ring. First was the modeling of the ring. I used Onshape to design it, and based the sizing and style from some of the hints you sent my way. I knew the approximate size of the diamond that would be set, so I based the initial dimensions on that, and we can always adjust it once the stones came in. But after trying a few shapes, I decided on this final design. It has four prongs, with a simple bridge between the prongs that not only adds some visual interest, but also helps to strengthen the prongs. There is space between the bottom of the stone and the ring itself to help open it up and give light a chance to really reflect through the stone. The next step was selecting the diamond. I worked with Peter Senesak, a local Gainesville jeweler, to help me with the process. Thank you, Peter, for sharing your knowledge and workspace. We picked up three possible diamonds and chose the perfect combination of size, clarity, and color. Even with magnification, it was tough for me to see the difference between them. It certainly takes a trained eye. We decided on the diamond, and then I 3D printed a prototype of the ring to see if the sizing was close. The diamond fit pretty well, but the prongs were a little too narrow. A quick adjustment, and we were ready to make the ring. The plan is to 3D print the ring using a castable resin, which acts very much like jeweler's wax. I loaded the amber-colored liquid resin into my XYZ printing Nobel 1.0A. This printer uses an ultraviolet laser to cure the resin. Once the resin is in the vat, we can lower the build plate and start the 3D print. The printer prints upside down, so it'll pull the rings out of the resin. Here is the printer in action. This was the first time using this resin, so I printed four copies to increase the chances of at least one of them printing correctly. The structures you see on the inside of the ring help support the top and will be removed afterwards. I printed these at different angles to see if it made a difference on the support generation. The rings were still covered in liquid resin, so a quick bath in isopropyl alcohol washes all of it away. Here are the final rings before we made the molds and started the casting. Unfortunately, I don't have pictures of the mold, but the rings were added in with a few other wax pieces that the jeweler was going to cast. A plaster investment slurry was then poured around the rings to make the mold. The mold was then heated in a kiln at a high temperature for a few hours. That burns away the ring, leaving a cavity where the ring used to be. We used a centrifugal casting machine to inject the metal into the mold. We decided to make the rings in silver as a test, since we weren't sure if the castable resin was going to work. Then we'll do the process again with white gold once we were sure of the steps. First, we add the metal to a crucible in the center and use a torch to melt the metal. We grabbed the investment mold that's been preheating in the kiln and put it into the machine. Weights on the other side were adjusted to make sure it's all balanced, and then we wound the machine up, made sure the metal was nice and molten, and then let the machine go. The centrifugal force slings the metal from the crucible into the mold. After a few minutes, the metal is cooled enough to where we can pull the mold from the caster and dunk it into water. The mold is still quite hot, and the thermal shock causes the investment to break apart. And the casting was successful. I snipped the rings off the rest of the casting and selected the best of the four. Then I started the long process of grinding and sanding. Using a number of different rotary grinding wheels and files, I removed the extra metal from the sprue at the bottom and started to grind away the layer lines. Now 
Even with the high resolution resin 3D printer, you could still see the layer lines in the silver, so they had to be filed away. And let me tell you, I have a new respect for craftspeople that work with such small objects. It was tough to get into all the right areas and remove just the right amount of metal. Once the inside and the outside was mostly smooth, we could expand the ring to the final size. It's always easier to make the ring larger, but it's much harder to make a band smaller. Luckily, we were at 6 and 3 quarters, where we needed a size 7. So a fancy tool called a PVC pipe was used to coerce the ring to the right size. Before we set the diamond, now is the time to get the body of the ring as close to finished as possible. Finer and finer grits of polishing wheels were used to remove any scratches left by the lower grits. Then a buffing wheel was used to add in the shine. Careful though, the buffing wheel really heats up the metal, so it's easy to burn your fingers if you worked too quickly. Unfortunately, buffing also highlights any imperfections. So if there was a scratch too deep to be removed by the buffer, you had to go back to a lower grit rotary wheel and start all over again. Once the body was close to being finished, I could then start work on the prongs. More rotary wheels were used to smooth the prongs and get them ready for the diamond. We had to file away material in the prongs to make a nice seat for the diamond to rest on. The edge, where the top and the bottom of the diamond meet, is called the girdle. It's important to cut away enough material where the girdle would hit the prongs so that we could bend over the prongs and secure it from the top instead of pinching from the sides. And here is how the prongs looked after filing, and you can see how much more grinding and polishing I had left to do on the prongs. Finally, it was time to set the diamond. The prongs were gently closed over the diamond. Once the stone was firmly in place, the extra metal on the prongs were snipped off and they were ground into shape. It is a delicate process of getting the four prongs to look exactly the same. You can use the diamond to your advantage and move the grinding wheel along the top surface to smooth out those prongs. The diamond is so tough that those grinding wheels cannot damage it. And it is done! After a few months of planning, and a few very hectic weeks of quote, working at the hacker space, the silver engagement ring is finished. And I learned a whole lot about designing jewelry, casting metal, and working with such small objects. It was also great to see how well the castable 3D printing resin works. That opens the door to many awesome future projects. And speaking of which, so Ashley, now that you've said yes, what do you think about a custom wedding band? <laughs>